Hello everybody and welcome to the webcast. Um, today I'll be covering the volunteer system in quite a bit of detail. It's a smaller system in Donman, but in fact it's got quite a few features and quite a few things worth looking at. Um, and so those of you that have it might see this as a refresher. Those that think you might need it can look at it and see if it'll suit your needs. But basically it's a system designed so that if you do have a lot of volunteers, you can actually organise them, record information about them, and in particular record their activities, select by their activities, select them based on their availability, and if necessary mail to them and talk to them, and maybe even report back on the various activities and how many hours they've spent in the areas they've spent. And I'll try and cover all those areas as well as bulk updating of volunteer records. So the volunteer system sits in Donman on this little screen here. Some of it, if you own the volunteer screen, it'll always be there. If you don't, it may be covered, but you can always right click and you'll get to the volunteer screen. If you don't own it, it won't really go very far. I think it'll stop you at a certain point. So I'm going to go into the volunteer, no, I won't go into the volunteer system first. I'm going to go into advise the donor program. The volunteer system is like all our other subsystems, like address, bequest, trust, um, and um, other things, involvements, they're all add-ons to the donor record. So a volunteer doesn't have its, their own name and address. They fit in with the donor screen here. So we have a donor here who, if they have a volunteer, the volunteer button on the screen will be in red. And being in red in domain always lets you know, yes, there's something there. This person has addresses involved, notes, trust, they're a volunteer. So I click on the volunteer button and this takes me to the volunteer screen. Now very similar to our bequest system, the top half of the screen largely is information that's the same as you will see on the donor screen. The basic name and address, phone numbers, email, etc. And any changes you make here will be made onto the normal donor screen. Uh, the only bleed through is date of birth here, which is again the donor's date of birth, but it appears in the um, in the actual volunteer screen. Okay, so for a volunteer, what we have is commencement. It's a commencement date. So we've got a, a volunteer, and we can. Oops. Hang on. Sorry. Um, uh, I'm having trouble entering it. I'm not sure why. Anyway, the commencement date, date of birth. And emergency call. Emergency call is just a way of indicating is that person available to be called in emergency if you need them. And then we have some many codes by which you can classify a volunteer. There is a status code. Now all these codes, like the other codes in Donman, are created by you. So when we go into the actual volunteer system on the menu later, I'll show you where you can create these codes. So at the moment I've created it as an example. Current, past, and I'm not sure what A means, but again you can create your own. So this person is a current volunteer. And now we have some history. Where have they worked in the organisation before? And these codes are little four character codes. And so I've got admin, cooking, kitchen, office. And again, you can create as many as you like. So you can see the last four areas, up to four areas that the person's worked in, and you can select by that later. So if you wanted to get a list of all the volunteers that have ever worked in the kitchen or in admin, you could do that. On hold. Now if somebody says, look, I'm, I'm away for a year or away for two years or they haven't been a volunteer for three years, and that's particularly relevant for this field inactive for one year, particularly if you're doing acknowledgements to the, to the volunteer and you want to reward them for three years of service. So you might look at their start date and end date and that might suggest they've been with you for three years, but if you see they're on a hold for two years, you'll know they're only actually inactive and you can say for one year. And then if they resign, you can put a resign date in. Health has ongoing indigestion. Sorry for my humour. Um, that's just a text field where you can just write something about their health. Um, the police check code is for all volunteers, usually you would do a police check. So you can either, your code could be yes, no, and I've got fail and okay, but you could, you could actually have a more elaborate police check code if it says something about it like pending, waiting, done, up to you. And the police check date, most important, when was it done? Because it's no good. Someone said their police check done 10 years ago. Well, they might have got up to some mischief in the meantime. Um, 
and that's probably really relevant with things like working with children checks that I'll go over in a minute. So we've got this history, the work areas placed up here, but the more important section is here, the experience interest codes. These codes are what does this volunteer do for you? What can I count on this person for? They can do um, counselling, hospitality, running around in circles, sales, good at chasing their tail. I we should get some better codes. But basically this is saying what can they do? So you can enter all their abilities, all the things you can do for, they can do for you, so that later on you can select them and you can say, look, I need all the volunteers that are good at sales. Um, and optionally, you can look at availability. So the availability is also a code. So we have code availability for all the days from Monday to Sunday. Now I've made my codes, codes AM, PM and evening. There's nothing to stop you creating a code which is 9 to 3, 2 to 4, you know, whatever you like, however you want to classify and you can then select by that. So I've got um, George and Mildred are available Monday morning, Tuesday evening, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday evening, Friday a.m. They're very enthusiastic. Um, and then their car registration details, so that if they do driving for you at any point, you may want to record what their car registration is, the make, model and their licence number, um, and the expiry date of their licence. So obviously need to renew that one. Um, do they have comprehensive insurance? Now I've also added working with children check because many volunteers, if your organisation has any contact with children, and in some cases, even if you don't, I did some volunteer counselling in a place and we didn't work with children, but there was a possibility that one of the clients may have come in with the child. And so I had to have a working with children check. So again, have they had the check and what is the date of their check? So that's the basic information on the volunteer record. Now some extra things. Now some of the things you'll see are familiar. The old note button and that's just the donor's notes. And you might reserve a particular button for volunteer information if you want to. It's up to you. But that's the same notepad that you get from the donor screen. The dollar sign here is exactly the same transaction history. The difference is, is if they're a volunteer and you go to the transaction history, you'll have a new tab, volunteer hours and volunteer acknowledgements. And I'll describe those in a minute. So the new things that aren't normally on your screen but are particular to the volunteer system are the emergency contact. So I'm going to click on that now and that tells you that the emergency contact for this person is the father, Mr Jack Smithers and the address, email address, etc. So you can enter that information about who, the, who they are. We also have their acknowledgements. In 2005 they presented for the year 2005, and they, weren't, they were presented in 1990. I don't really understand that, but basically you say the date of presentation and the type, and this is the code, and again you create what you get. So I've got codes like certificate, birth certificate, dinner, hearty handshake, and Mercedes Benz. I don't think anybody's getting a volunteer on Mercedes Benz, but you never know. Um, so then you've got up to 10 of those different acknowledgement things. Probably the most important bit on the volunteer system here now. And this is only if you want to record. Up until now, this system is just about recording information about people and pulling them out by what they can do for you. And there are people that just use the volunteer system for that and that only, and that's perfectly legitimate. But if you want to go another step further and actually record how many hours they spend working for you, you can click on the activity button. Now when I create an activity record, I'm going to create one now, I'm going to say it's today's date and their work area was in admin. Um, now you can link a volunteer to a function. So for example, if that function, the work area was towards a function, I can allocate it to a function code like a ball and then that volunteer record will then be a, appear under the function information. You'll know for that function that so many volunteer hours were spent for that function, so the two can be linked together in that way. So I'm going to say four hours were spent today, and I can put a comment if I want to. Now all those activity records can be found in the tab here, volunteer hours. So that's the one I just entered now with the new optional function tab. That this person spent four hours in admin actually working for the Ball 94. Um, and we have all the various other hours. And down the bottom we can see the total number of hours 
and how many records. So they volunteered 10 times for the total of 101 hours. And then volunteer acknowledgement summarises what you saw in that volunteer acknowledgement screen. The hearty handshake, the dinner, the year and the acknowledgement date. Okay, so I'm going to leave the volunteer screen now and go into the actual volunteer system. Now, when I go to the volunteer menu, the first option, Add Edit Volunteers, just takes it to the same screen we've just been on without going via a donor. Um, you may want to do that, but most times you'll do it from the donor screen. Probably the most important thing you'll want to do is be able to select on volunteers, and this is where the volunteer selection. But before I go in there, I'll just quickly show you the codes. So volunteer status codes, I've created those codes. This is where I create the various codes. No different to any other code in Donman. Um, police check codes, they're all there. So you can create your own codes. Um, there is a volunteer breakdown report, so you can actually report on the volunteers. So I can say we can select by work areas. We can select from and to date. So I might say first to the first, 2011 to today, and I'll say a subtotal for each work code only. And I will then know how many hours I've seen. Six hours were spent in the kitchen uh, in admin and three hours spent in the kitchen. Now that's not showing the individual records of the people because I asked for a summary. If I run the same report, And this time, I'll even ask for the address too, which is an option. I will get the same information, but I will actually know who the volunteers were. So I've got their, who the volunteer was and their address too, and that's an optional extra. Um, but let's now look at doing a selection. So we want to actually find some of our volunteers. So this program, it's very comprehensive. In fact, there is nothing on the volunteer system that I've shown you pretty well that you can't select in the two screens of this selection program. So the first thing it asks you is, do you want to create a selection file or a merge file or both? So a selection file would be if you wanted to use the results of this to do, say, mailing labels or something else. But if you want to just do a merge file and say, yes, we're going to write to these people's word, and give it a name, and we overwrite that because I've used that before, it does default to the name volunteer.txt but you can use anything you like. And once you've got those mail merge, you can then go and create a mail merge in Word and write to them and whatever, you, whatever your need is. If you're picking people out because you want to thank them, you could thank them. If you're picking them out to ask them to come to work next week, you could do that too. So you can see that we can select on anything like current status. So typically, if I'm looking for people, I would want to pick only people with a current status, and I can do more than one. Do I want to select by the areas they worked in? No, not unless it was historical. Do you want to select by function codes? If I only wanted volunteers that worked in a function, I could. Do you want to select by experience interest? Yes, I want people that have um, sales ability and hospitality or hospitality or um, counselling. There you go. Now the next question, I'm going to dwell a little bit on this one because it's a little tricky. This is where it says, do you want to select by availability? And you can see you can select by availability on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So if all we wanted to do was to find somebody who was available on Monday morning, that would be easy. We would say, yes, availability, Monday, and we want Monday AM. So now we're selecting Monday morning. Problem comes, we have the option of now saying and or or. We may want people that are available Monday morning or Thursday morning, or we might want people available both Monday and Tuesday. One of the problems with this is I don't want to make this complicated for you. I want this to be as easy for you to use as possible. And if we started combining ands and ors, you'd have to use brackets and it'd be pretty technical to say, I want this and that, but not that. So we're, the basic rule in this is you can either do ands or ors. So whatever you put for your first choice is the choice from there on. So if I put and there, then every option will be an and. So I'm saying I want someone who can be available Friday morning. So this selection is I want anybody who can be available Monday morning and Friday morning. Now, on the other hand, if I changed that to or, then everything would be an or. 
in which case I'd be saying Monday morning or Friday morning. So I hope you get the idea. You either do a set of ands or a set of ors. Um, and I think that covers most options anyway. Now the other option that we've added recently is selecting by code pool codes and even creating code pool records for those selected. Now when I looked at that and reminded myself I hadn't written that, I, I scratched my head and thought, why did we do that? And then I remembered that the reason we've done it is there are many cases where you might say, look, all the information you've got on volunteers is all very well, Andrew, but we actually want to record some extra things. We'd actually like to know a whole lot of other stuff about volunteers that you haven't mentioned, like we need their medical certificates and we need all sorts of stuff. So the answer is you can simply go and create your own code pool codes, create a master code and sub code in code pool, and then you can then, from this screen, select by volunteer criteria and select particular code pool codes. So if I created a code pool code for a medical condition, I could select only those that did or did not have that. Um, and what I can also do is if I particularly wanted to record a lot of information, I could actually create a code pool code for those records selected. So if I say yes, I'd say for anybody selected, make their master code um, appointment and their sub code after money. Now that would be silly, you wouldn't do that. And you can put a date, and you can put a number, etc., etc. So I can do that and that will create the code pool codes. Now on the second screen I've gone to now is everything else that you can select by in the volunteer system. I won't go through every option, I've been through it on the front screen. But you can see there's presentation date between, acknowledgement years between, selecting by acknowledgement types, commencement date, age, emergency call, basically everything we've done, police check code, working with children, out for the total hours, between the dates. Um, so you can actually, if you want to, if you pick this option here, you can actually, as well as selecting, ask the program to export the total hours work between the dates. So if you want to write to them and say, look, we're just letting you know that between January and December, you worked 14 hours for us, you can do that. Um, okay, so let's do that first, the first 2011, and just a couple. And we can use a second address file and we can load Word and Mood straight away, I won't do that. We have the fields from the volunteer file that are there, but you can add your own fields as you can in Donman. And I put so much criteria, I've only got one record that maps, that's that met it. And we, again, the screens we've picked on are all there and we can print that or save it away if we want to. So that's the selection. Having done that selection, I can very easily do a Merge file. I have my volunteer TXT, which is the um, merge document, merge text ready to be merged. Now one more thing, sometimes people say, well look, that's all very well, but I don't want to go through, and let's go back to the volunteer screen. So we've got a volunteer screen, and yes, we can sit there and say, sorry, wrong, wrong button, we can say, um, yes, I want to put in today's date and the work area and the number of hours, but there are situations where you say, well look, we've got 10 people that just every week come and work for four hours on the grounds. So we don't want to have to go through each one of those people and enter those, that record. So what we can do is we can do volunteer activity by selection file. So we actually, it says, have you done a backup? Yes, I've done a backup. So I create the selection file. Now I've used the selection file cell. One's 146 of them. So I had 146 volunteers according to this example. Now my choice is to create new volunteer records, update existing ones or delete existing ones. Now I'm going to create new ones. The activity date is today. The work area is in the kitchen, it's a bit silly, and so the office. And there's no function, not a function. A number of hours would they work for an hour each um, to test. Continue. And now what we've successfully done is now you see uh, there, there is something there. We had a hundred or so records in the selection file, but it said that only eight records were updated. And there's an important reason for that. That selection file is a general selection file I did on the donor file. It wasn't properly done. I should have made the selection from the volunteer system. So what it's done is it's looked at those other records and said, these people don't have a volunteer record. So I'm not going to create a volunteer activity if they're not a volunteer. So the eight records it created are real volunteers. So when we go into volunteers, there's every chance that my record number one will be in there and we will have a new volunteer hour record 
there we are, the office one hour um, today. So we've all created, for all those eight people that were in that selection file, we've created a volunteer record. Um, that's really the nub of the system. There, obviously, you can report on it via the reporting system. So if we go into um, Visual Reporter, I can report on the volunteer system and look at volunteers. And I've got my um, uh, volunteer. Everything is there, resigned, acknowledgement, date, whatever. And I can also report on the volunteer activity. So I can say my criteria was volunteer. Anyway, most of that can be done with the volunteer selection program. But if you do need to run a report, you can report on all of those things using Visual Reporter too. That's pretty well all I've got for now. And I hope that it does leave a lot of time for questions, which is good, because I'm sure there'll be lots of them there. So Marla, do we have any questions? Hello? Hello? Sorry, just removing myself from mute. <laughs> uh, there are no questions posted as yet, so if anybody does have a question, please um, enter them into the question box. There might be some areas that um, people might want you to go over again. We've just had a little bit of feedback that you're going a little fast, so oh, if there were some areas that people wanted you to go through again, then speak up now. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Uh, so we'll just give people a couple of moments to add their questions in. As I said, you pop them in the question pane, which is on the control panel on your right hand of your screen. You just need to type in your question there. <laughs> uh, just had feedback that they lost you around the code pools, so I'm not sure if that's an area you might want to just reiterate again, Andrew. Okay, um, the code pools. Okay, so let me just refresh you that in the donor screen, you can create code pool records, which is your own master records, your own code. So when I go to code pool, somebody can have many, many codes, many, many things. And I've created code pool records here for region, allergy, and things. So when I add the code pool record, I've got a master code um, and a sub code. And you can have another, you can have actually multiple codes. Um, so I can be, I can have a code of allergy and a sub code of whole mill flour and a date and a code and a number. Now what I was doing was showing you that it was possible in the volunteer selection to select by those volunteer codes. So that for example when you are in the volunteer screen where you can see all these fields we have that you can use to describe a volunteer, if there's something else you want to do to describe a volunteer you could use code pool to actually create codes that describes more about their volunteer status. And then when you're in the volunteer selection, you've got the ability to select by code pool codes. So if I've created a code pool code about something to do with volunteering that's not on the volunteer screen, I can still combine that selection by code pool code with the general volunteer selection. Is that clearer? <laughs> or if not, I'll, it might be a more specific question. Okay, uh, there's no other questions posted at the moment, so we will give, um, oh, and a bunch have just come through, so let me just start reading them out to you. Um, first one's from Annette. If the donor record is set up as a couple but only one person volunteers, what is the best way to indicate this and be able to select the person who volunteers only for a specific volunteer mail out? It's a very good question. Um, <laughs> 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 um, let me think. I really think it's a little like the ball table listing. If you've got a Mr. and Mrs. it will show on the screen. I don't know how you can do it differently. Um, I mean, you might be able to use um, second address so that if you had a second address for the donor so that we've got Mr. and Mrs. George and Mildred here, but if I created a second address here for John Beagwood, or it might be just George Longanitas, and then when I did the mailing for my volunteer mails, I used the second address file, and I chose, let's suppose I created an address type volunteer. So I would know that when I do a mailing to volunteers, to always use the second address of mailing of volunteer if it was, if it was there. 
Actually, I think that is the way to do it. That would be quite a good way of doing it. Okay, there's a question from Gemma. Um, can we activate the volunteer function by ourselves as we never have used it before? No, you need to buy the volunteer system so that, let me just show you the, the price. Um, hang on. Oops. Okay, it's $800 to purchase. Once you've purchased it, we will then um, provide the means that you can activate it because you can't get into that system by yourself. It is active in the training system, so you are freely available to go into the training system, play with it, do anything you want in there and make sure it does what you want. If you need it activated in the donor system, you need to pay the $800 and we will help you, any of the staff here, ring the help desk. I will point out that if anybody's interested in going ahead with this, I am away for two weeks from Monday, so your best to just ring the help desk, not me personally, um, for the next two weeks. But yes, it can be easily purchased and you can talk to more about it to the staff here. But no, you can't set it up yourself. It is an optional extra because most of our customers don't actually have volunteers. Okay, Andrew, there's not any other questions posted um, as yet. That's obviously a couple of good questions there. We'll um, certainly, just in case there's any more questions, we'll just hold on the line a little bit longer. But um, just to let everybody know, we do record our webcasts and that we'll make them available on the website afterwards. And any questions that are asked, we'll do our best to make the answers available to everyone via our newsletter as well. So it doesn't look like there's any other questions at this stage. Let me just check again. Um, Okay, there's a question from Naomi. How do you do a report as to who was in on a given day? Who is in on a given day? Okay, that's, that seems pretty straightforward. Um, for that, we wouldn't be doing much in the way of selecting at all. We'd be just volunteer selection. We'd be to say um, a merge file or, or a selection file. Select volunteer activity between first of the first uh, first of the third two thousand and twelve and first of the third two thousand. Now I won't have anybody, so I won't run that. But that is looking at anybody with an activity on that day, and I would then get either a selection file or a merge file of those people. Not any. So I wouldn't put any other criteria at all. I mean, if you wanted to limit it by where they worked, you could. But if all you wanted was the total number of people that volunteered on a day, that would give it to you. Thanks, Andrew. And the question from Michelle, is there a place, I think you might have um, mentioned this at some point, but if you can show it to, to us again from Michelle, is there a place to pop in a police check uh, reference code for each volunteer? Yes, definitely. Um, here it is here, and it's here. Um, police check date and police check code. So you correct the police check code and you enter the date. And down here we've got the working with children check and working with children date. Okay, I think that's all the questions, Andrew. I don't know if you just want to run through the contact information and how to purchase again and we'll wrap okay. things up. All right. So contact Val at Donman, and there's the phone number. It's our general phone number that's available probably for the next month or two. Uh, oh, no, it'll keep being available. We redirect it and we move into the head office. And there's Val's email address, vturner at edgisol.com. Um, normally you could, I would say, ring me, but I said I'm away for two weeks. I will be in on Friday. Um, so if anybody does have questions, you can ring me on Friday. But any of the staff know the volunteer system, so just talk to Murray or Paul or Gary, and they'd be only too happy. Um, even Shari, who's just started, I hope some of you have talked, met Shari and talked to her at the moment. She's doing really well learning the system and being good on support and already starting to take some calls for you. Um, so yes, just contact us. And if you do want to purchase it without talking to anyone, just send Val an email saying you'd like the volunteer system. Okay. 
Thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, as you may be aware, we're now running webcasts each month, so our next one is scheduled for Wednesday the 18th of April, and we'll send details out to you shortly about the topic for that. Um, and as we said earlier, we will be posting recordings of all our webcasts to the website if you've got some colleagues that would like to um, join in next time. So thank you again for joining us today. If you do have further questions, um, as uh, Andrew has suggested, contact Val on vturner at advsol.com or send, uh, give us a call. So that concludes our webcast for today. Again, thank you. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>